Okay, today we are doing some cleanup of, well, we kind of messed up this whole system, installed on Windows Server on the last stream, screwed up the boot MGR, so clean up that a little bit, and then also hit up some win util. It's going to be a pretty fast stream today as i uh, got to get ready for LTX. I'm heading out tomorrow morning to Canada. That'll be first time to visit that country. I'm afraid it might be too cold for me. I, I think the high is going to be 72 Fahrenheit. I'm like, oh, God, that's chilly. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. I'm used to the 100 degree weather we've been getting down here in Texas. So uh, we'll we'll reboot into old windows and see what we have, because uh, this has been treating me really well. I've been working on this. And while I'm away, too, uh, I'm going to be away from my family and everything. So. I'm going to have more time than I know what to do with myself. And I think while I'm away, I don't know if I'll be able to live stream it or not, but I am going to work more on my DWM because I really, really love this layout. And I love living in Linux with the DWM uh, window manager. It's just oh, so wonderful. And it, it just can get even better. So I haven't installed on my laptop, so I'll be working on that uh, while I'm at LTX as well. So that'll be fun. And then also get to meet get get to meet some fans and other stuff that'll be a blast so let's reboot into windows let's see what this bootloader looks like it's a this this windows bootloader is a bit of a disaster you're about to see yeah so we got to get rid of windows server default to windows 11 with no option i think we can just do that through like a sysdm panel and then just wipe out the server and then it shouldn't show it anymore we'll probably still need to rebuild the bcd data database though uh, it should be relatively simple i don't think that'll take me very long to do let's see how long it's going to take me to either mess up my system or uh, fix the startup i don't know um you know i'm not really big into the we can auto restart but the dump files eh most times they are pointless Let's just do that. Okay. And then let's look at disk management. I think we can probably just wipe out server 2011. Ooh, which one is 2011 though? I think it's that guy. Yeah, I'm a betting man. I'd say that's it. So we'll just, uh, just delete it. Okay. So that's gone. And then... I don't think BCD boot is here by stock defaults. So we probably, probably will work. Let's see, BCD boot, is that even a, oh, it is there. Look at that. Uh, I think we could just do a BCD boot, uh, C windows. Uh, actually, if we take a look at disk part first, I guess you could use easy BCD. I'm kind of a big fan of just using all official Microsoft tools. I don't know. Maybe I'm a masochist. <laughs> uh, possibly. Let's select vol four. Uh, let's assign letter equals job back. And what do we call that? A, B, C, D. Let's call it E, F, G. Let's call it G. I feel like G is the right way to go. And then if we list vol one more time, you can see it's there. Great. So now we should be able to do like a BCD boot. And, you know, I think I doc documented this on my website. I always pull it up just because I screwed up so much. Well, it's not really me screwing it up. It's Windows screwing it up. So Windows partition. Um, Recovering a deleted Windows partition. That probably has it. So S D force all. Okay. That makes sense. Actually, you know what? We can probably just copy paste that command looking at it. So now if I did that correctly, we exit out and we pull up the BCD database again. We're just going to go into system DM.CPO. Go to advanced startup. Look at that. Doesn't display operating systems. And uh, server 2000 is gone. Magic. I guess we should read or reboot our computer just to make sure that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We installed a bunch of Windows Server instances. Yeah, was it Tuesday? 
and it decided to just go rogue on us and start messing up with the uh what is it uh the boot manager database and just started adding windows versions to an existing windows install i was like that's not what we want that's what i get for letting the windows installer do it automatically have you seen the Xena mess, Chris? I have not. You'll have to tell me what, what is the Xena mess. Yeah, it's Windows being Windows. Let's get old chat up. Yeah. Hola. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only problem with suing Microsoft is they have an entire department dedicated to just law work. <laughs> Good luck. You'll be stuck, stuck in litigation for years, and then you'll end up owing them money. <laughs> I think the next thing to fix as well is Winget. I've got a lot of complaints on this, which is Winget failing to install. And we can totally fix several issues all in one go by just changing the Winget installation script. So let's look at that. Uh, da, 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 da. and kind of want to modify and use this script. We used it a little bit on Windows Server, and it worked pretty well. I recommitted this to the main branch as well. So let's uh, let's just download that. Pull origin. Yeah, fetch. All right, great. So that should get us, we'll open up old VS code. And what we're gonna do here is, here's the Winget, new Winget PSI or PS1 file. I don't think we can need to call this file per se, but what we can do is copy it and we're gonna come into functions. And if we look for Winget, Here's this. Now, typically in the past, it's always tried to install Winget using a method um, like this, but this method doesn't quite work. And what I'm going to do instead is one, we'll get rid of those lines. Let's just take these up. Take that. Um, error action preference, I think we're going to actually get rid of, and we're going to just go silently continue as I don't want it to, uh, to cause any issue. I think that should fix most of what we got for LTSC and server installations. Let me see if there's anything else else when get from Microsoft store, we could still push this up, but I'm almost to the point where I'm like. It's not even worth trying to do an MS app installer. Even on modern Windows, it's kind of jank. Although there's workarounds to it as well. One workaround is pulling this up, advanced. And if we look at, I want to say environment variables and path, sometimes on some installs, this doesn't exist. The user profile, app data, local Microsoft Win apps. I almost want to write it. Uh, this is a bug in Windows. Windows, Microsoft should eventually fix this, but we could just do a check to make sure Microsoft is doing their job because we all know that doesn't happen often. And if this pad does not exist, it goes ahead and adds it. What that does is it makes sure that your system has access to WinGit. If you're on Windows 11, it's it's a pre-installed. It's already there. It's just on a lot of systems, people are causing error messages because Microsoft forgot to put it in the path variable. Ah, it's silly. What's this? A Xena is an X, Xbox 360 emulator. I think you can just see this and get an idea for what happened. Well, is it okay to make script to download and install a cracked version of paid software? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, it depends on what software it is and your version of cracks and what kind of cracks are you using i would never condone cracks per se it's just mostly because there's just a lot of viruses in them so i would be looking for alternatives to the software there's so much free and open source software out there that there's very little things that are paid in today's world that are actually any good so i mean 
I'm trying to think of, I, I constantly get like people trying to put shareware basically into my, my toolbox. And I even talked about this last stream, I think where a lot of it, uh, actually that's not an admin prompt. Let's go admin. But a lot of it, I was kind of like, you know what? I really want, um, a lot of it just to be FOSS. Uh, there may be some exceptions here and there, but uh, there's some stuff that has made it into here where I'm kind of like, uh, I kind of regret adding that. Probably like glary, glary utilities. The free version has some, some utility, but it, it, it's a little bit more of a gray area. Like internet downloader, I think it was another shareware. Project process lasso has another bit of a shareware. Revo uninstaller free version is actually pretty good from what everyone's telling me. There's a couple in here that I'm kind of like, uh, the free version does a lot, but the paid version's there, which kind of taints the software a little bit. So I, I don't know. I don't technically like the, the shareware side of, you know, software development. I feel like the world has moved on from that. It's either a paid product or not. So I don't know. So having to crack paid software is kind of like, usually there's a better alternative is, is what I'm trying to say. And if there's not, then I don't know. I think you should just pay for the software then. Uh, but it just depends. There, there's nuances to that. Like, here's a good nuance. Like Ubisoft Connect. Is that, is that their launcher? I can't remember. Um... I would never recommend anybody to ever buy a Ubisoft game. If you want to play them, on the other hand, I would I think it's totally okay. If you went and did alternative methods than opening up your wallet to anything that runs on the Ubisoft launcher. I'm not going to say what those methods are, but I highly recommend you explore those. Because paying Ubisoft with further launcher that is just awful... You can have a lot better experience if you explore the alternative methods. <laughs> so there are there are there are things where I'm like, eh, I wouldn't would go the the piracy approach, but it just depends. As with everything in life, it just depends. There's gray areas. Hey, Patrick, half a year when time does fly. I can't believe I've been streaming that long. I love the streams though. That's been the, that's been, I've been happier and just in a better spot than I ever have been in my entire life. Just doing the streams twice a week, finding this really cool medium ground and then working on programming stuff and then bouncing back and forth between windows and Linux. I, I know it's uh, people get whiplash watching me because I'll bounce between both operating systems, but man, that's just who I am. It's just where whatever I love. It's what I love to do. Let's test this, by the way. Um, we could test that, but I almost want to just take out this else statement altogether and just say, run it. But the one catch I probably would leave in, so there's this. I would leave the less than 1809 because if it is a really old version of Windows 10, Winget is not going to work. But I think removing this if statement directly. Let's try this. I think we'll remove this if statement altogether. And what we're going to grab out of this, instead of leaving it up to Windows to install Winget, we're going to make sure it happens every time. And then we're going to get rid of this else statement. And I think that should be pretty good. And let me just make sure we're on the test branch. We're going to fix when get install. Commit to test. Push. Oh, okay. Un unpunished. I was, was like, I was wondering about what was happening there with the emulator. <laughs> Beeped really loudly. I don't know why I missed that on the code. Still have a lot to learn. All right, all right. Looked like they were just adding some piracy measures and then blocking ISOs, but... 
let's see what we have here. Now, with that done, let's go to our main branch. We have test right here. Let's check our test branch. We're going to fire up our old VM. Uh, reinstalling Edge is still a little tricky. So we'll have to, we'll take a look at that as well. Um, let's try stock Windows 10 first. Let's boot this one. We could try to reinstall Edge after this. See what happens. Yeah, people always ask about reinstalling Edge. There's some there's some Edge fanboys out there. The guy I work with actually uses Edge. I give him shit every time I see him open Edge, but he still uses it. I'm like, all right. You do you. But I'm gonna make fun of you for being you. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens when we launch our uh, toolbox, shall we? This should install Winget. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got to grab the test branch. Oh, something there. All right, let's go here. And let's grab... Where is the code? Oh, view code. Okay. It's like, where is it at? So we're going to grab the new utility. This says upgraded... 16 hours ago oh we're on the main branch i was like that's not it now this should have been updated two minutes ago that's what we need we're going to grab the raw file copy it all right copy that raw file again Control c irm paste it and then we're executing now this should install winget for us let's see what it does yeah we'll install chocolatey too so that seems to work. And then let's go just like install Brave. Checking if Winget is installed, running alternative and direct installing. Winget failed to install. Okay, that did not work. <laughs> that was a failed commit. All righty. Let's take a peek. What, what happened here? I still face an issue to launch WinUtil on some Wi-Fi networks. How do I fix this? If you're having issues with Wi-Fi after running the tweaks, I imagine, if that's what you're asking, um, you could just launch into like services.msc. I think it's like Wman. Let's see. Uh, what is it? Wireless. What is the wireless service? I think it's WLAN auto config. I would probably take this, change that to automatic from manual. If you had a Wi-Fi, I mean, I, I could just disable it because I don't have Wi-Fi on this computer, but uh, YLAN service uh, basically provides, you know, discovery, connection, disconnect to wireless local access network or local area networks. So if you're having uh, access problems with your Wi-Fi on like a laptop, you want to make sure that is automatic because you're going to be using Wi-Fi like crazy and you want WLAN auto config to go. It'll probably still work after running the tweaks, but you might run into some slowness on that. So you might do the WLAN auto config. Uh, WLAN is for like 3G cards and stuff. So if you have like a, you know, a 3, 4G card that you have on your laptop that doesn't use wireless, then you might need uh, the WLAN service as well. I could run a alternate notification for that. Um, what is, let's remove that API latest temp folder. I mean, we could do a quick fix of that. That's just changing it to invoke web request. Remove item probably. Yeah, sure. We'll fix those uh, just warnings though that shouldn't actually keep things up hmm if this doesn't work we'll probably just curl the independent script and run it direct so it went here and then it just stopped and just said when git failed hmm yeah when git failed to install on the catch okay Let's see what happens on that and change too much just the error action do a pull and then we'll try and update this. We'll just do a basic commit and push. Yeah, VMware Workstation Pro, easy to easy to pirate. Well, I mean it's VMware. VMware makes their money from big business. 
And I think they actually give you licenses for some... I can't remember what it was. They actually changed their licensing up, I think, this last year. I haven't been following it. Okay, let's see what we got. We're going to just refresh. And then, let's see, win get. That's uh, programs. Checking if win gets already installed. Yeah. So from here, this should switch over. And you can see the updated code. Let's see if it works this time around. And we're going to just come on over here and put that right there. Just say brave, install selection. Nah, it's just immediately dying. Let's try a curl. We'll change the way this is implemented. Kind of like how we did with the remove edge. Because I already have the independent script there. So that's fine. Let's see. So from all of this, if win util package manager dash win get break. Interesting. Let's see if it'll run any of that. Actually, uh, so we're going to leave that. Let's just get rid of all this. It looks almost redundant. That's not at all what's happening. Okay. You should be able to start the process, but I almost kind of want to download this locally and run it. But it should start the PowerShell process and run that, even the branch. I have updated winget.ps1 to pretty much force an install regardless. Hmm. Yeah, this should technically work. And as far as branch version, is that being set? Let's make sure that's the next thing. Branch to use. I don't know if that is actually being set anymore. Hmm. Branch to use. Let's let's verify that with the full blown compiled file. Branch to use. Now that's that is not a valid variable. That is not set anywhere. I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I remember us using that a once upon a time. But uh, yeah, not not any longer. What we can do. Ah, geez. Let's just go here. And I think we can just do main. And I'm just going to double check that this resolves. This address resolves. It should never really be updated except for every once in a while. That does resolve into our script which is great. So what we're doing is kind of stripping this out. We're fixing this and changing it to the main branch. It should start a new PowerShell process, run this independent Winget script, and then kick it back to here, and Winget should be installed for real this time. Let's, uh, let's push. We could copy the script. We're going to try to execute it direct without downloading it first. If that fails, then we will do like a old school copy and then we can remove it directly there or after if we wanted. A couple of ways to skin that cat, so to speak. So this one, if we refresh, do to do, do, start process. Yes. So this is all good to go. Let's send it. So we're gonna launch into the test branch. We'll just toss this up. It's a little bit ugly, I know. But uh, we're going to just test it. Should open up a new window. And yet it did not. Hmm. Alrighty then. Okay. Let's see. Why is that? So we started the process. Argument list command. It's doing an invoke rest method. Grabbing the win git. And then out to the host. Error action stop. Test when util package manager. I think this is being called too soon. And that's causing issues. So probably need that to wait for the command to finish before doing it. It's fine to test it. But once it tests, it breaks this, which the break might actually throw it into the fail to install catch. Hmm. 
Um, the Bluetooth audio gateway service to stop anything that would cause it. This is my first time running the utility. Uh, if you're getting like a, you see this in term service as well, not just Bluetooth. I typically would just let it wait. It'll eventually stop. Or uh, you have like a Bluetooth device connected. You just disconnect it and it'll stop. Or you could just reboot. All those things should work. It, it should eventually go through. I'm almost tempted to remove the error check for that and then just force people to reboot anyways. Uh, that might be a little bit more proper. So I might rework it to where just say, hey, run the tweaks, and then it just automatically sets all the services instead of trying to stop each service that we're setting to manual. Uh, having said that, if you are using Bluetooth, might need to look at changing that tweak because Bluetooth might be something that you like. The same thing happens with uh, WLAN service as well in tweaks. So if we look at that, and we look at WLAN, that's set to automatic. What about Bluetooth? Bluetooth ser user service is set to manual. Um, I think BTH also down here. Some of these BTH services might be Bluetooth as well. You might set that to automatic again if it causes you problems with Bluetooth. Have you managed to defeat AMD drivers? I gave up on that. We just deleted uh, server. All of all of Tuesday's stream, we're just going to pretend like that never happened. All right, there we go. If Winget is not installed, then catch throw. Winget installed failed. I think so. I think what we'll do is we'll probably take out the test and should launch in and then write that out. Let's see what happens. Just removing the test. Hyper-V versus VMware. I mean, I like both, to be honest with you. I don't mind Hyper-V or VMware. They both aren't bad products. I kind of prefer VMware a little bit, but I don't know. These days, I'm almost, I don't really set up much of that stuff anymore. So I'm like, XCP and G all the way. Screw both of them. <laughs> so a lot of it, uh, I'm kind of have an affinity for Zen server based. Uh, XCP and G. It's like my favorite hypervisor. I know. I'm weird. I'm weird. Refresh. We need that to disappear. Let's uh, let's wait. Uh, did we not commit it? Oh, we didn't commit it. I was like, that's not updating. Yeah, forgot to push it. That 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 would help. <laughs> Just a scooch. Is it hot for everybody? I was actually just, when I started the stream, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally flying out to Canada to go to LTX tomorrow. And I'm, I'm afraid it's going to be too cold there. I'm like, dang, do I need to pack like a hoodie and like jeans? Because it's supposed to be like a high of like 72, which sounds just chilly as hell. I'm used to being like 105 driving in. I mean, flying into that, it's just going to be like culture shock. So I, I'm going to pack some jeans and a hoodie, I guess. This is supposed to be pretty cold the whole time I'm there. With highs in the low 70s. My wife's just like, shut up. I want that. <laughs> like, I know, I know. I see our electric bill. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm a big, I prefer it hot than, than cold kind of guy. All right, let's refresh. Did that get rid of it? Nope, the test is still there. Come on, what's going on? Uh, let's just do a control F. Um, control F5, maybe. All right, keep going. Install Winget. Ah, that test looks like it's still there. Let's check on this machine just to verify. Sometimes the raw files takes a little bit longer to update. Yeah, so that works here. And then if we look at the raw file and see that the raw file didn't update. That's the one tricky thing about GitHub is sometimes when you're doing uh, develop like testing, you got to watch out for that. Oh, yeah. Software suggestions for sure. Yeah, I take a ton. We, we, we have a huge backlog of... Uh, a software that people want added to when you till 70s isn't that cold. I think it's getting down to like the fifties though. I think the 70, 72 is the high. That sounds cold. <laughs> that sounds really cold too. 
<laughs> coming from where I'm at. I wonder why this is taking so long. Usually it doesn't take this long. Usually it's like a minute or two. Hmm. Oh, yeah, test locally. That's a good point, Alex. We could do that. Do like a curl. And it curl if doesn't exist locally in the temp directory, go ahead and curl it. And then if it does, um, the big thing there is if it updates, how do I know the local copy isn't like an older version? Because like installing Winget, it's going to be a little bit tricky on that regard. What in the hell? Come on. There it goes. Okay. Dang, that took forever to update the raw file. Okay. Let's go here. And then we click Brave, install. And then that seemed like it uh, did not work. Just thinking about it. But no, ah, man. All right, let's see what we got in the temp file. See what, uh, what's bombing out. I think, is it temp? Can't remember where it tosses it. I think it's temp when you tell. Yeah, we have a little bit of log file. We can look. That's not telling me a whole lot, is it? All right. This is the initial run. These are your subsequent runs. Last run. It's just like nothing. Nothing spit out to the log file. Okay. Helpful. Yeah, I think that I think that's what we initially tried to do, but it just bombed out on us for whatever reason. Let's see. So here's Winget PS1. Let's see. What do we have? Winget dependencies, it should grab those. Uh, and I, I just tried this on server on Tuesday and it did work. So we got the functions. I think the functions are what's throwing this one off because I think it's trying to call a function within a function, maybe. Yeah, function install win util win get. Um, so I think what we'll do do on that maybe is add we got update invoke install yeah update environment okay we'll just we'll just do private functions right here we'll toss these in here as their own independent functions so let's go new file and this is going to be called update environment variables yeah i didn't want to use the microsoft method though no profile ps command path oh man okay we're gonna go function there let's just add our little cheat sheet at the top so we'll update programs via winget da, 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 da. updates path variables for the current session, sure. That sounds good. Yeah, this does check for if it's already installed. So we have init. All right, we're going to close this one. So we got update environment variables. Just making sure I didn't misspell it. I have a tendency to do that. It should be good. And then if we look over here, function get latest URL. Um, I don't particularly like how this one is grabbing things through like an uh, IWR. I kind of want to change these functions around. We could honestly just get rid of the functions. Am I going to call this variable more? Maybe. I might actually use that one. So what I would do here is let's remove those. We're going to just get rid of get latest URL. Yeah, let's see. Get latest URL. Is that anywhere else in here? I do not see that anywhere else. So we're going to paste that guy in there. Then we're going to get latest hash. I don't know why these were broken out into. Ooh, this one is a little, a little more tricky. 
we're going to grab and set the SHA variable and SHA URL. Mm, it's actually a function I kind of need. Um, I need to reject all these changes too. I forgot I'm not even doing it in the proper spot, but that's okay. It makes sense in my mind. <laughs> it's going to make sense for everybody else too after you cringe a little bit watching me do it. Uh, yeah. So we're going to get rid of this, but instead of calling that function there, we're going to toss it above this function. So I don't think we can define the function inside of another function. I could be wrong on that. We're just going to test this real fast. Bear with me. Yeah, we can curl it for sure. I wanted to update this URL uh, and grab the latest hash and also... Uh, so I don't have to update this constantly. And it, I don't want it to break every time there's a new version of win, win util. So that's kind of my thought process of doing it this method. Get latest hash. And if we look, get latest hash. Okay, that's still there. Invoke. And now we got some IVRs and RMs. We'll update that to be more proper. I guess proper, not double positive, more proper. <laughs> um, is assigned, but never used. So don't need that. Web client assigned, but never used. Well, before we delete those, actually, let's just take that, copy it. And then over here, what we're going to do. Oh, damn it. Okay, so then this is all our stuff but we need to make sure i call that other one let's go here when get discard changes sure let's just go ahead and pull that origin let's come back over to here all right what did i mess up here update environmental variables right there and that's still being called feel like that would work now. Let me fix some of these warnings real fast. Not necessarily needed, but it's just good to do. Make me feel better. That, and if it's like an older version of PowerShell that doesn't have that alias or something, it won't freak out. So these two variables are never used, apparently. Which makes sense, because why would you ever call environmental temp? Let's just make sure those variables aren't in like update environment variable. Huh. Okay. That should be good. Yeah, RM works in PowerShell. It's actually an alias for a remove item. You can just do remove item instead. But RM does work. I actually made a huge alias file with my PowerShell, so it does a lot, a lot more. Hmm. I don't know why I even have that. Let's get rid of it. We're not using this variable. Let's get rid of it. Or this variable. Let's get rid of it. Clean this up. All right. So now it's nice and clean. I think we declared our functions properly. Everything should be called. It's grabbing the latest hash, downloads direct from Microsoft. So when Microsoft updates like desktop app installer, or um, I think it's also using VC libs or these other, other aspects, uh, Microsoft UI XAML, that might change. I might need to update it as that goes. We'll see. We'll see how much they want to change when get around. I do have a good feeling about this one though. Let's try it out. Win get fixes. I think this one's going to be it. This is going to be the money shot. Yeah, if you guys ever thought like, um, like, oh, wait, I'm missing icons. Really? Hmm. What are my settings? Default, appearance. Huh. Yeah? Hmm. Interesting. Um, some of my terminal fonts and stuff aren't showing up right here. Terminal icons. While well, that's updating in the background, I'm just going to look. Let's make sure we have that module loaded. It does look like it's there. 
So it must be something else that it's missing. Yeah, it's already installed. I wonder why I'm missing that icon. Maybe it's something I haven't installed yet. What do we got in our drive? Let's go into... I'm just going to take a quick detour and install just a few fonts. By a few, I mean 187. Let's just install those, shall we? Yeah, okay. Just grabbing a couple of fonts. I think I'm missing one. I just don't feel like figuring out which one it is. So, uh, yeah. I use a couple couple fonts. Everybody likes fonts. Just have a folder full of them. I'm like, ah, I'm missing one or two. Let's see, did that fix our... Oh, no, it's still broken. Okay. Shit. Is that really... <laughs> what the hell? Hey, come on. What is that font? It's missing. That's Windows. Bloat is its middle name. Uh, huh. Maybe Starship? Yeah, it must, must be something in Starship. Oh, well. Regardless, I think we're good. Let's... Um, I bet we can need a pull. Let's uh, head over to our VM that we've been testing. Alrighty. So you'll see a lot of this change around on the refresh. Yeah. Let's see what this looks like. It's going to be interesting. It is definitely going to be interesting. But I think this will work this time around. All right. What what is this spam? Video editing moving in Clipchamp. Nobody uses Clipchamp, dude. All right, all right, looking better. Yes, sir. There it is. All right, that forcibly did it. So now this should install WinGit on every install. Period. Like never should there be an install where WinGit can't be installed. I just shut down. And are you telling me you don't clip champ all your videos? Well. All right, we're going to go here. Let's start it up. We're going to try Windows 11 now. Make sure everything's right with the world in old Windows 11. Here, we'll go full screen with this one. Yes, I think some might call it pointless. <laughs> all right all right here's a fresh install stock windows let's pretend like we're running our toolbox for the first time on this fresh windows oh lordy okay yep just take my first child that's fine yep cool github.com chris titus tech win util all right from here let's switch to our testing branch to come down here five minutes ago we did our update let's grab the raw file we are going to execute this in terminal so pull up our admin terminal irm toss that guy in and execute so this pulls it up do you want to install chocolate for now we're going to just say no and then we got our toolbox from here we're going to just say install brave it says when gets already installed and it's going not bad so this should work on every iteration of windows even server and ltsc so i like this method because it doesn't use the microsoft store at all it, it forces all the dependencies in and just basically brute forces it into the system so you'll always have winget except on really old versions of windows 10 like before 1807 which i don't think anybody's really using those anymore yeah or 1809 that's right yeah winget does require 1909 and newer but almost everything else should work so that is looking mighty fine on a stock install and then we'd be like all right we're good edge and then our edge we messed around with last week and figured out and got rid of it and made it default so that should fix winget all together hot diggity dog if someone's using those versions they're probably still using windows 11 yeah that's 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 probably the truth man um what do we got yes all right 
All that shut down. I think we're ready to do... Uh, let's just fetch, pull. Yeah, we're good. Let's look at here. What we're going to do now is a PR. So we're going to go win util. I need to just make this like my home page. I go to it so often. We're going to compare and do a pull request. All right. So we're going to go push our testing branch to main. Let's see how many commits we have. We have remove edge from start menu and desktop. This fixes that. We fix the YubiKey user service. Um, also, there was a kiosk and AJ router disable, so it gives you a little bit more, less processes. Um, a merge branch. I don't know what that's from. I can't remember. A telemetry tweak dupe tweak removal. There's a couple spots where it was applying a tweak twice. Didn't want to do that. Hibernate actually deletes the hibernation file now and turns it off before it just turned it off. Uh, cleaning up Windows update folder. Uh, when you clear out stuff, I do a rebase now using DISM with Windows update. That cleans out the thing. Uh, game DVR fix. There was a problem with actually disabling game DVR where it was not disabling it all the way. Now it does. Uh, fix consistency and variable names. Uh huh. Also put a SPDX license. Someone requested that, like having MIT license put in the code. I was like, sure. So I put that uh, in there. Uh, Derp uh, did a good commit for a dark mode. And then there's a bunch of other fixes. Good lord, how many commits am I doing here? All right, I'm tired of reading the commits. Let's just let's just go. Let's just create the PR. Uh, giddy up. Let's go. There's a lot. That's a pretty big one. Let's look at our file changes. There are probably not that many. Oh, the Discord server's still around. Uh, I think I still have it up, don't I? Here. I'll uh, link it in chat. For those that want to join the Discord... I kind of I like my Discord being kind of small... <laughs> But if you're hanging out in chat, I'm sure you're you're good people. I just try and keep it off the YouTubes. Where is that? Invite people. Yeah. Well, let's invite some people. There we go. Okay, let's uh do a quick preview. That's all the tweaks. Yep, yep, yep. Uh get win util dark mode. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a cool uh utility status that was changing. This is all of that commit. Oh, and then there was a problem with, uh, oh, no, shut up, that this also fixed. Uh, someone was complaining about, I went ahead and put that in. Uh, more Wingit fixes. Damn Wingit. I regret. I regret changing from chocolatey to Wingit. But we're, we also, um, Derp has been working on improving it to where chocolatey will be a good fallback. And we may even add Scoop in soon as well, because Scoop has a couple packages I kind of like. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the future. All right, here we go. Well, let's, uh, review. Oh, I can't improve my own. <laughs> can't improve my own PR. <laughs> that's okay. I just wanted to do a quick review. Uh, let's look at our unit tests and see what it looks like. Oh yeah. LTX. I'm getting excited. I can't wait to meet, meet a whole bunch of people. I haven't actually done a public event except for one during like it was shortly after COVID. I, I want to say it was 2020 still towards the end of 2020. Uh, met out like a, a little local meetup of like 10 people or so. It was it was cool. I like a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> um, but that's a, about the only public appearance I've ever made. OK, so all that looks good. Anything else? Squash and merge. Giddy up, let's get it. I would love to see. Oh man, I would love to talk with Luke Smith. That'd be fun. I like talking with with fellow nerds, like whoever it is. I don't even care if they don't like me. I just like talking nerdy stuff. That's just fun. So I, I'm always like, yeah, I'll talk with anybody. And I think I've actually been looking. I've been stealing stuff from Luke lately. I think I've be, I've been redoing some of my B, uh, DWM. And Luke has some really good one. I think it's Larbs is what he calls it. And uh, 
some of his stuff on his status bar I really liked. Uh, it didn't, I don't think I like DWM blocks that much and he uses that, but a lot of his, his scripts are pretty, pretty good. I really have enjoyed using some of them. All right, so we got that. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think we're ready to delete this branch. No open pull request, yes. Yeah, I think Scoop works a little bit differently, for sure. We're still working on some of the unit tests here. We'll wait for this to go ahead and push through. And then once that pushes through, we'll launch into the terminal and then try it live. So we got our 712, and then we go branches. This one's been merged. I think we are safe to delete test. We'll create a new branch. Today is 0727 test branch. Oops, uh, test 2023. Let's try and be a little more uniform here. Create our new test branch for people to do PRs too. That's all set up and done with main. I guess I should have looked at main before I did that branch, but eh, I'm sure it's fine. Looks like it's still going through my unit tests. Should check out arc theme. It's a Nord type theme in official Debian repos. Oh, okay. I'll definitely look it out. Oh, no, no. Discord's for public. Uh, subs just get like a special role and then they get auto invited. So you get um, like if it's a sub from YouTube or Twitch, wherever you subscribe, it'll uh, give you a role for that. Man, these unit tests are taking a taking a little bit. Yeah, I'm. I was. I was actually three hundred and seven when I started lat. So I've been doing nothing but just hammering stuff. I just set my homepage. So like when I close out of my browser and I open it, I see the win utility issues. So uh, every single day I try and tackle something. It's getting to like the meat and potatoes of the issues, like the really difficult issues to tackle. But I think we're to the point where it's like, okay, I think I, I think I got it. Um, let's pull up our last commit though. Let's, uh, go to main branch fetch. Uh, we'll pull and we'll go ahead and flip over to our new test branch. If we go to history, we're going to do, we'll call number 917, this PR. We're going to, we're going to do a lot with that PR, but I think the big thing here was, hmm. Yeah, we'll just call 917. Screw it. I, I wanted to give it a, the exact commit I made for that, but 917 encompasses quite a bit of fixes in the past weeks. Uh, so this one is now got it. It is done. 917, let's reference our PR. We're going to do a lot of references to this PR. Close some more, close some more issues. <laughs> My favorite reports were used when you till PC broke set on fire. <laughs> I know, I know you do get, I'd say you get 50% of them are like that, but I still appreciate people trying. Um, some of them are not helpful, but some of them are. So it's like, Hey, and I would prefer it just to be completely open like that with everyone being able to submit an issue because some people, when they submit issues, and I would say a good chunk of them are really good issues where I'm like, Hmm. That is interesting. That didn't happen for me, but let me check it out. And then sure enough, if I do a little bit more digging, I can replicate it. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, that's awesome. So that that does make a big difference. Oh, uh, when you till something broke it. I have run in a lot of those where I, I find a lot of Windows users, what they tend to do is like download and run like 30 tools. And that that's wild because they'll like optimize their thing. They'll, they'll set up like their timings and change all this stuff. Maybe even change the scheduler in their CPU and, and just go completely wild and then run my toolbox and be like, Hey, uh, something's not working right. And I'm like, mm, that's a little sus. Uh, my tool doesn't really touch that. <laughs> so that does happen, but Hey, 
and this black screening tabbing out of games i still haven't been able to replicate that yet uh you know what i'm just going to copy that i'm sure there's going to be other stuff in here i'm going to grab i spent spent hours today configuring kde desktop not finished but it's getting there kde has some really good tweaks i still probably my favorite desktop environment if i had to choose one desktop environment to live in for the rest of my life it probably would be kde it's still not perfect but it's close <laughs> so that's that's kind of my thought uh program search does not work all righty and is there any other ones adding selection of software we really got to tackle that probably on the next stream we'll probably tackle that guy um some of these other ones should be pretty easy to get through like some of the xbox errors and stuff those are usually simple little tweaks and remove like pre-installed blower that should also be pretty easy software request yeah anything else in here let's let's flip through we only got three pages of issues now <laughs> yeah i've been trying to get better at the tool i still would not recommend it in production for a big company uh that's something where i i think you should take and steal from my code and like design like a ps1 script that has zero interaction so that's a lot of the the original portion of my script was made because i had a script i ran from that's actually the the origins of this script the very very beginnings of it before i even did win forms or the xaml or any of the stuff you see today it was mainly a ps1 script i used at my work that i ran on startup on a new system so i'd, I'd throw up a new system and then i would just ran everything manually so uh, I had a PS1 script, but I would just program it all in. So there was zero user interaction. You just ran the script and then in the background, it installed all the programs, set all the settings, and then that, that computer was done. So that was the whole origin of this script was me just taking that and going, how do I make this easier for everybody and adapt it to everyone else's needs? It's, it's gotten, uh, as it's aged a little bit there's been a lot more a lot more nuances to it because there's certain things people do that i don't like use edge and like fixing those things have been a little bit more of a, a nuisance to get around but i'm getting there i'm getting there we'll get them all eventually just keep just keep at it and, and while i'm at ltx i might even work on win util a little bit too as i go through here i'm like hi you know, we, we've gotten a lot done just in the past week or two. Update tab changes. Defender to disable. Hmm, I always go back and forth on that. Win get UI with scoop to avoid infinite app requests. That's probably something pretty easy. I do want to add Tron script and reference it because that is good for removing viruses on Windows. And these are pretty old. I could probably close those out as we've attacked. I think we've done most of those tasks, but we'll we'll circle back around. I think it's at a really good spot. I'm really happy with all the progress that's happened this week. So, hey, <laughs> issue can't install Edge. Actually, funny you say that. Uh, we actually have it on the development. Uh, where is it? Can't reinstall Edge solution here. Uh, what was it? You can actually go and download Web2 from the download selection and choose standalone installer and manually install Edge using this way. So this method from sudo wolfie, of course it's a Linux user to the rescue. <laughs> it it, uh, <laughs> it fixed it. That's awesome. And let's see, there is an Edge script removal and regedit delete that you have to do as well. There's a couple other little nuances that I did that we'll we'll have to undo, but we'll we'll create a whole script to do all of that in one go for reinstalling Edge, as all the pieces are there for us to do it. It's just man, getting rid of it was so hard. Now it's trying to get it back. <laughs> that is also almost equally as hard, uh, which is uh, pretty hilarious. Oh. Uh, just give Edge its own special tab and when you tilt. It's true. Oh my gosh, Ashlyn. Dude. 
<laughs> uh, make a script that uninstalls it and reinstalls it. That's pretty much what this script will do on command. Uh, so is this when you tell much more advanced than your old deep loader or just tweaked? Yeah, the big problem I have with it is not necessarily doing what I want it to do. It's having it, it's interaction with users. This is the hardest part that I struggle with. Like when you launch into the script, having it act in a way that a user would like and that's clean and then do it all on the fly is like one of those things. Like having it in that user-friendly format is is the most difficult thing I struggle the most with. And I think next week, what I'm going to tackle the most, or maybe I do it on the weekend. I don't know. We'll see. I might, because I, I don't imagine, I don't know how much free time I'm going to have at LTX, but I imagine it's going to be a substantial amount. Because I'm used to having almost all every minute of my day cataloged. <laughs> and i am always got something going on. But uh, fixing this up, like, I think I'm going to get rid of power throttling altogether. Uh, changing numlock on startup into a toggle switch, like you see over here. Reading those settings on the fly. Same with, like, file extensions. Uh, display performance. I'm, I'm not sure. I might go between performance and visual. Um, UTC, dual boot. That's for, like, uh, Linux users. Uh, and some of these things, I, I could do a better job on how this works, but these also need to be advanced. And I think I might add like a red background or something to really just caution people from going crazy over here. I'd much rather people just click this and go, uh, than, than anything else, but we'll see, we'll see what I end up with, but it's always the challenge is always making it as user-friendly as possible writing the script super easy if i if i was just like if you just said hey i needed to do all these things and that's it i could just do that the big issue is most users have different uh, options they want and they want an easy way to switch between those options and that's the that's the catch just writing a ps1 script to just go do those things are super easy it's it's making the other uh making everybody happy which you can't really do but you can get close, and that's where we're gonna happen. It's it's just one of those things. But yeah, the the toggles will help a lot, I think. But it I think the big challenge with that is a lot of people don't realize this is never installing anything on your system. You know, maybe a Winget install program that you choose, but running this script, it is building this GUI in real time. This is not a program, this is actually PowerShell. It's a XAML driven menu system built in PowerShell on the fly. This is a script. And a lot of people, it's like, say what? Because I've had people email me and go, how do I uninstall your utility? And I'm like, you, you didn't ever install it because I have zero settings or anything that gets left behind. The only thing that ever gets left behind from my script is if you go to like CD into temp, um, oh, what is it? Temp? Oh, geez. Where is that? Let's just go explore. Oh, what? Temp? No, that's not it. Did I fat finger it? I did. No, that didn't work either. Damn it. That, I guess that shortcut doesn't work. Just go temp. Temp. All right, there we go. So if you go into the temp folder, which is actually your user folder, app data, local temp, the only thing that ever gets left behind by my utility is this a little log file so every time you run it you can actually reference stuff that uh gets left behind or what you did in the the script which you know obviously man i've run this a couple times on this system huh oh that's right i remember when it was having problems with the run space but uh, you can easily yeah pretty cool but that's the only thing that ever gets left behind from the thing is just a log file I'm proud of that. <laughs> so basically you leave behind your own name for post promo. Yeah. I I think in the original, it's funny you should say that lat uh in the original win forms the, when it was back win 10 script before Windows 11, 
I had buttons to go to certain videos to like how to remove a virus and you click that button, it will launch my YouTube video. And then I think when I referenced the Win 10 script, I changed the shortcut so it would launch the, the YouTube video that would show you how to use the new script and what it all changed. So there was a, a auto launch. So those people that made shortcuts for the old Win 10 script using Win Forms would auto get redirected and it would launch YouTube with their default web browser uh, showing the new script. I'm going to tell you, that's pretty good self promo. And I probably got a couple, couple pennies from Google in ad revenue from it. <laughs> Are you going to clean GitHub issues today? I think we're pretty much done. We closed out probably five or six GitHub issues. That's pretty good. I don't really do too much more than that in a day, especially as we're getting kind of the meat and potatoes. You can see what uh, the development looks like right here, what we're working on and kind of the remaining issues. And these what we'll do is as we get through them, we mark them done, close them out and just toss them in the done, done branch, which is kind of cool. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a fun way of doing it. I really love the more I, I use GitHub, the more I love it. It's just, there's so many neat utilities. One other thing I need to probably look at some more is like the discussions. I don't ever come over here, uh, which is fun. Uh, so I need to look at that and uh, work on those a little bit uh, and probably answer some of these. It's just issues, pull requests, and and usually my projects tabs, the thing I focus the most on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in PowerShell. I, I, whenever I'm in Windows, I'm in PowerShell. Like, I love PowerShell when I'm in Windows. I, and now, I would love to work on this. I've even tinkered with the idea of using this in Linux and programming this uh, utility in there. But then I'm like, okay, that's just silly. Because <laughs> I'd, I'd have to virtualize Windows and do it for just the testing of the utility. Because you can install PowerShell in Linux. It's just, it checks syntax and stuff, but you can't really test a lot of the stuff from the, the toolbox, obviously, without Windows. All right, y'all. Well, I'm going to get ready for old LTX. I'm going to shut her down early today. Sorry for the short stream, but um, we'll, we'll see what I can do. I might be able to pull a stream out. I think I'm actually going to be streaming with Jeff Gearling on Saturday, I want to say, at LTX uh, for a couple minutes. And then uh, doing like a little meet and greet. And then I don't know what else is planned. We got two days of entertainment uh, there. It's going to be interesting. So I don't even know what to expect. I'm just going to show up and then probably try to eat all the free food that I can get. If there is free food, I will be all about it. And uh, just enjoy myself and probably enjoy the cold weather in Canada. Yeah, that'll that'll also be fun. So, all right, guys, take it easy. Have a great one. And I'll fill you guys in on next Tuesday's stream, everything that went down. And then we'll probably tackle some more win util. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe depending on how much stuff I get done, we might go back to DWM Titus and kind of fill it out as well. So, either way, it'll be great. All right. Deuces all.